Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you to Sundog and our sponsors and to Chard and my fellow poets and community members. Life always comes full circle. I started out around here about almost 40 years ago now. I don't know if anyone's from here, but I used to work at Bentley's as the um, hostess when I did the evening news on W. NHV. <laughs> and, um, and what I've known all along is that words matter. I was always a reluctant school goer, camper, <laughs> poetry goer. Um, but a friend of mine said to me once, your words are taking you to this poetry reading. That's cool. <laughs> Go where you're words take you. And that's been important to me to think about we're all here because our words have gotten us here, metaphorically and literally. Um, and also our words matter in terms of how we speak to ourselves. My work has changed a lot recently. Um, and I was teaching an essay last semester called Not by Lies by Alexander Solzhenitsyn who won the 1970 Nobel Prize. He lived in Vermont, he was a Soviet dissident, wrote the Gar uh, Gulag Archipelago. And he suggests to us as a way to make sure we're living our best and freest lives is to live not by lies and not to lie in our speech, no matter how inane the lie is. Like, yes, I love your dress. <laughs> And I've been trying to do that for the past couple of years, and it's, it's hard. Like, I used to be very talkative. <laughs> uh, not so much anymore, but... Um, <laughs> back then, when I first started out in uh, Republic of Self, my Ars Poetica, I, I thought of the sound bite. You know, I used to have to make sound bites out of old reel to reel, this is how old I am, old reel to reel clips in the newsroom, and I thought, oh, that's so cool, I can make it say what I want, so the story can read the way I want, and I got to go, oh, don't do that to myself. And, but I was into that postmodern idea of what truth is, and um, how it's fragmented, but the older I get, I see how that isn't true, and I'm trying not to live by lies. So I'm going to read you some new poems from um, a book that isn't out yet about, um, well, there are clouds in the book. It's based on this idea by the Indian poet Kalkisa in his long epic poem, Megaluta, where he is far away from his beloved and can't get to her, so he sends messages by cloud. And I thought, oh, that's great. I'm going to have clouds in my book to send me messages throughout time so that old Liz can send young Liz messages to keep her out of trouble and to not live by lies, et cetera, et cetera. And the new book also focuses more on um, my favorite creative endeavor, which has been motherhood. So the first one I'm going to read uh, is called Plastic Bag Lamb Womb, which is a, um, from an article I read on BBC Online about how uh, they are producing new wombs for lambs to be able to take um, baby lambs and produce them outside the mother. The plastic bio bag womb is a mixture of warm water, salts, a homemade amniotic fluid to support the Lilliputian sized lamb. Inhaled, swallowed, stewed in the womb, this fluid is flushed through the bag each day. A continuous, fresh supply of moonshine. The lambs begin to develop lungs. The heart pumps use blood to the placenta machine, replenishing the tiny lambing body once again. The lambkins open their meek eyes, grow a woolly coat, scent glands in their faces appear comfortable living in their nouveau polyethylene homes. After 28 days released from their bag, they breathe on their own in the lab. Then they have the long lead to the slaughter room. 
Only one lives, a favorite of the janitor. The others are killed by injection in the jugular after a shearing, so the researchers can see exactly how beautiful they have grown. One of my um, best friends, Dr. Ann Johnston, passed away a few years ago, and she was a neonatologist who treated heroin addicted um, babies before they were born and after. And um, she's one of my heroes and a mentor. So this poem is dedicated to her. It's called Too Late to Stop Now. This week I dragged the Christmas tree out like a corpse. I was homesick for mutual assured destruction in 1985. Love was a meeting of solitudes, the thin tissue around ornaments, air in the neonatal unit saving junk sick babies. I drank oolong tea in bed, read Delillo, and had a neck ache. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart. I rocked some preemie babies, made new cells, a couple of poems. Suddenly, Anne in the hospital, lymph nodes, margins, 10 inches of snow. I didn't take anything personally, except when I did. My neighbors telemark skiing, bonfire in their vanities. Anne lost numbers, words, minutes, space, knitting needles, life. There was still a god, and the maple apple bunt cake went stale. I realized everyone was my dead mother acting out a Beckett play. I accepted this week all previous weeks prepared me for with their nervous dirges and the Tibetan Book of the Dead. I was still this Elizabeth and the soul who claimed this Elizabeth. This week, love in my pantry, on my doorstep, on my tongue, the ice kept caps kelp melting, a terrible sun. This one's called Cloud Song. Why don't you open the red gingham curtains now? It's morning again. Get your hiking boots laced. Coffee percolates the scent of your homemade life. You can surrender yourself to your mistakes. I will be your witness. Isn't that why you sent me from your childhood sky across time and space? I set sail on the sky over the Catskills, over the green mountains, traveling out to go in. The trail map left by those who came before. Each blaze flew marker painted on a tree where the root turns toward the summit is where you can leave a mistake behind. Go upward over the ridge of falling stones. The closer you get to the peak, your mistakes will sink into the carrion and moss and make you stronger and more mystic. Why do you think I merely hide the presence of God? You can be yourself in any tense you like when you lie in the grass and look at the sky. Use mistakes like wine that ages well, makes blessings out of fermentations. Don't ignore storm signs. The more you become the moon, the more responsible you are for moving the tides. Pay attention to the magnetic force that is your compass. That's how you will find your direction. So stop trying to understand the difference between obsessions and prayers. Where has it gotten you? So it's called the birthday of the trees. It's a holiday based um, on the Hebrew Bible. It celebrates the birthday of the trees it's for my grandmother. Only on the fourth year after planting do we eat fruit. Today, we remember why. Is it that we too are trees in the field emerging from winter sleep about to bloom? Bright star of apple blossom, a memory in my pupils, cascade of pink and white in this bright kitchen where I have loved my children, feeding them double cream and cherries, cooking spring lamb with figs, fresh peas and mint. On this day, I give thanks for the years in each ring. As the trees put on their leaves, so I put on my grandmother's coat. I have and hold her blue-veined hands now. 
In the old country, she did not celebrate her birthday, her only certificate, the tree of life. I head to the upper orchard to read the sacred text of Bart with these hands she has lent me. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.